Welcome, I'm Janelle Kolaski, a career mindset coach and actor. And I'm Amanda Duvall, a self-authenticity and prosperity life coach and actor as well. And we're your co-host of Mindset Artistry YouTube channel, where we teach you the art of discovering and using your mindset to build a career and life you desire. When you think of like inner hero, because you know, we've heard as kids growing up, like superheroes and, you know, just heroes in general. But what is that? What do you, what does it come up for you when you hear inner hero? You ask me, you ask in the audience. <laughs> well, them too. I'll ask the audience and I'll also ask you. Um, yeah. I mean, if I think of inner hero, it's just be your own hero. Makes me think of Mulan. Makes me think of just, um, finding your own but i i have a lot of thoughts about that so i really love this topic uh because it isn't easy to find i don't think i i agree though thank you for your candidness because it isn't something that you automatically have right or you know that you have you know that it exists right but you or always associate or at least we associate superhero ness or hero ness in other people and it gets so hard because we think of certain attributes of that person whether they're strong, they're tall, um, you know, they have big arms or they can speak strongly. Like these are things that we see in other people, but it's very hard sometimes to see that strength within ourselves. And so what happens is we start playing victim in our lives. Hey, <clears throat> we start playing victims. And what happens is we take on the idea that life is happening to us, not for us. And so we accept all of the victim isness that comes from it, which means, right, which means anything that happens to us or anything bad, we accept it. And we think that's the way life is supposed to be because we're the victim. I accept it. And then therefore, it's going to keep on happening. So why not change? Because guess what? that's just who I am. I think that's BS, first of all. This whole, I think it's just, that's just who I am. That's just the way I am. BS, because the way you are and the way you choose to be are two different things. There's a choice in everything that we do. So this inner hero that I tell you, everyone has it. This inner hero is a version of yourself that stands up for yourself. That's the version that knows how to make choices based on what you truly want, which is aligning with who you are, what you want in your life, you know, your values, you are, this version of yourself is aware of your happiness, is aware of tapping into your truth and your inner voice because your inner voice starts to integrate into your present moment, into your consciousness, into your unconsciousness. And so everything becomes aligned. And so your inner hero is waiting for you to let that inner hero out. But playing victim or saying that things are just constantly happening to me because that's just the way it is, is not claiming your inner hero. It's actually doing yourself a disservice. It's actually disrespecting your strength. It's actually disrespecting who you are and what you're capable of and what you're meant to do on this earth, right? And so sometimes, again, this inner hero is over-talked, overshadowed by our fear, by our anxieties, by other people's opinions, by our depression, uh, anything that makes us feel less than, anything that makes us feel less desirable, anything that makes us feel like we can't, right? These are the th things that overshadow our inner hero. And so our inner hero is constantly going to be fighting. It's like a, a, get a battle in, in the ring. You remember those, um, I don't know, and this, I maybe aging myself at this point now, but you remember those, those, uh, Rock and sock them, but the the ones that you press, so you and all it would do is this, and you had the black, I mean the blue and red. That's what it kind of reminds me of. That's what's happening with your inner hero, and then the the victim or the or the inner voice that you're choosing to adapt and allow to take on the actions of your life every single day. But it's a constant battle of punching, going, no, I got this, no, you got this, no, I got this, no, no, no. And so what happens is. Your inner hero decides to end up taking a step back because it's like you're not ready. You're not ready to claim me. And so now with everything that I said so far, and I, you said you this is a really interesting topic for you and you wanted to talk about your inner hero, what, what has um, come up for you thus far and 
how have you in the past claimed your inner hero? Sorry, I might jump back and forth because of this rabbit trying to tear me <laughs> okay. down. Um, no, oh, one second. Hold on. <laughs> if anybody doesn't know, you know, has an amazing rabbit and loves to like eat things and go around the house. So there, there she is. There, there she is. The shit to buy, but but she's got. All right, stop jumping on shit. All right, she wanted the attention. Yes. Anyway, so to answer your question, you have to address as actors we know the distraction in the room. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, this has always been a weird one for me because I have been standing up to bullies for other people my entire life because of my brother, right? So it's very easy for me to, I have no fear. I don't care. If you're picking on someone that is having issues standing up for themselves for whatever reason, I will step to you. But I wasn't doing that for myself. And I'm just, but when you, and then when you think about heroes, I think of like leaders, I don't think of fighters. And so I think that's what the difference is because when I would try to stand up for myself, even more recently or most of my life, I go into fight mode. And um, I think also feeling kind of sad that uh, being a person that fights for so many other people not feeling like I have that support it's been annoying to like I've been fighting the desire to do that for myself like why would I do that for myself if other people aren't going to step up either but I'm trying to walk you through my own process of how I can find my own hero and really I think when I look at it more like um, being a leader and not giving up um, because it feels like if you're fighting or you refuse to fight and that's like the, the positive hero thing to do, it feels like you're giving up on a situation. I think it's easier to be your own hero. And, um, and being your own hero, it, it means you know that you're worth it, even if other people aren't supporting you, even if other people aren't stepping to others that are hurting you. That's how you know that you can be your own hero. So I'm not really good at it. And it's something that, you know, I'm constantly working on. But I guess if you want an example, <laughs> I would say the fact that I built a career in fashion and entertainment when nobody really, like, was there holding my hand. And a lot of people were telling me I couldn't do it. And for whatever reason, I kept saying, but it's what I want to do. I was being my own hero in that way. Um, and um, now just being like, I'm gonna take the self care that I need and the space that I need if uh, I don't feel like I belong in a space is also being my own hero. Oh. So, which is really hard for me because I'm telling you, it feels like I'm giving up and I'm really working hard to reframe and be like, no, Janelle, like you're being your own hero. You're, you're, you're taking yourself out of a situation where you're not protected or respected. And, mm. and that's annoying, but that's what has to happen. And so no, no one's going to do that for you, especially in these toxic places. So you have to be your own hero, you know? Mm. Oh my gosh, I love that. I love the idea of reframing and that would bring me back to my, to bring me back to my next topic on the idea of inner hero. So our inner hero, right, has taken on a form that may not fit us, right? It's a form that we've adapted to be something of somebody else's um, vision. And when we allow ourselves to reframe what hero is, it's not always being strong, right? It's not always going, I'm going to be the strongest and I'm going to lift that building and like save the train of people, right? That's not what we're talking about. What I'm talking about is your inner hero is again, like I've said before, you know, is understanding that oh, anxiety is happening right now. So standing up for myself and going, how can I overcome this moment of anxiety? How can I overcome this moment of feeling fear, right? How can I overcome this moment of feeling worthless? How can I overcome being in a relationship that isn't serving my happiness, that isn't serving my well-being, that isn't serving my health? How can 
I be that superhero where I'm in the uh, preparing for an audition and I feel like I'm not worth it or I'm overthinking it? How can I stand up for myself to allow ease and groundedness within that moment to go, this is where I want to be. This is where I'm choosing to be. And how amazing it is to have this moment of growth or awareness. Super a hero, your inner hero has so much awareness about what is happening, what your needs are, what you desire and what you want. And sometimes that inner voice that's associated with your inner hero is other people's voices. And so if someone's telling you your hero should look a certain way and be a certain way, and you can't relate to that, how can that inner hero be or exist within your reality? How? Because you're not connecting to it. It's not your truth. And it's not grounded in you wholly. And so... I love the concept of claiming your inner hero because when I was younger, you know, I was bullied. I always felt like things were always happening to me. Why don't they like me? You know, I remember going home and crying to my mom and it's like, you know, I was made fun of or, you know, I, I just felt like I belong. I didn't feel like I belonged because I was this mixed girl, black and, and Puerto Rican, but yet I didn't, wasn't too, I didn't look too black, but yet I didn't look too Spanish either. So I was kind of like in this limbo between place where it's like, they, I don't fit in with the, the beautiful um, black girls and I don't fit in with the a beautiful Spanish girls. So what does that leave me? I'm like this skinny, tall, kind of curly hair, wavy, kinky haired girl that like feels very insecure. And then I was tall and skinny. I didn't have big boobs. I didn't have the big butt or the plumpy butt. You know, I was like very, very, very skinny. <laughs> right so I end up playing this victim of like why me why me I don't get it and then it took a while for me to start realizing even though my mom would tell me all the time like you're amazing that I had to reclaim my inner hero and and love myself right so you're also your inner hero loves who you are no matter what no matter what is happening because when you really truly love yourself you're good you're bad the ugly the, the weaknesses, the strength, the, sh the shadows of yourself, right? And you integrate all of that, what happens is you have the ability to take on anything because you have a clearer mind of where you stand and what you're standing for and what you want to do. And then you're taking responsibility for your choices. Your choices are, again, aligned with the life that you desire and want. And so your inner hero, trust me, is waiting, waiting to be let free. Your inner hero right now is probably chained or shackled or put in a box, whatever metaphor that you're using, maybe it's a baby, maybe it's a really, really small, but this inner hero is your highest self, is your most integrated self where it's grounded and able to make, again, the choices or, you know, claim your life. You know, take back control of your life. Because I think a lot of us, and I'm guilty of it, and I've done it before, where we give away our power to people, things, and places unconsciously and consciously. We give away our power to things. And so there, we end up going, oh, they're great. They're great, but then we don't associate ourselves with greatness. And so that's giving away our power because we're putting it out. And I'm not saying, you know, don't compliment people. Absolutely. But you're going to say it in a way that goes, oh, they're great. And I know I am too, and I'm not competing. I'm not, I'm not competing because I'm in my own field. I'm in my own energy. I'm in my own life where I know I'm thriving. I know that I'm going for my dreams. I know that I'm living abundantly according to myself and what I want, you know? And so I just want to know, I have no idea if people are here because the numbers keep fluctuating, but let me know if this concept of inner hero is relating to you. Do you feel like you have a handle on your inner hero? Do you even know what the inner hero looks like, what they say, what they're doing? Let me know um, if not in this live, drop it in a comment on the carousel that I posted about. Let me know what your inner hero is saying or not saying and how you're relating to it. Because sometimes your inner hero is there to give you the confidence and the boost that you think you, know, you want and need, but you're not listening. You're automatically 
automatically shutting it down because you're saying or associating it with something that's more negative. Now you have something. And something you're touching on there is the inner hero, like you always talk about, is your own voice. And so something that can be very frustrating is the situation I'm currently in. It's funny how the universe teaches you things. Uh, it's like you go so far along a journey and I felt very confident in what I'm doing um, and who I am because there were people that were commenting on certain things, like maybe they would tear down my appearance or some actions. But I would say after the, the past few years, I've really had to question like, wait, who am I as a person? Because this has always felt like, okay. And like, I've had like a lot more negativity around me. But as you always talk about your inner voice, like, it's just like, you have to keep coming back to that, your inner voice, your inner hero. Because for people out there that are in toxic situations, you can start to second guess yourself. You can start to second guess your inner hero. And I don't want you to feel bad about that because then you need to st when you start to second guess yourself so much, it's really important that you find a way to remove yourself. Maybe you even take a day away, take a day to hear your own voice. Maybe you need two days. You know, Amanda and I love the play a doll's house. I think there's a, I don't know the exact, line in the in the play but it was speaking to it took her two years to hear her own voice and so your inner hero doesn't second guess itself your inner hero already knows so for those of you that are like oh, i don't know and then i'm hearing so much outside of me and all of this and um and everybody's different i'm around some people where everybody puts them on a pedestal and then with me i'm not often put on a pedestal which was okay until people started really like attack me. And then I was like, wait, is there something wrong? But when I took time away, I'm like, no, this is who I am. And this is the, what I've heard. And this is the path that I know. And that resets me. And it's really difficult because um, like Amanda said, there was a point in her life when she was kind of like constantly coming home, like why me? And why does this keep happening to me? And so I would love if you could give a very detailed explanation as to how you got out of that. Like you said, you changed your mind, but that's not easy. And so for people watching, you know, how did you do that? Because it can be so hard when you're in a place of pain and when there's so much evidence around you that you don't, you aren't a hero you aren't worthy this evidence right which is mm -hmm. true but how did you get out of that how did you break free sure so i think it it changed over time so when i got to high school i kind of just adapted a, a version of myself that and i also grew into myself right i became this girl who was like sexy and did barbara's eye i was like Ooh, i'm a girl yay uh but it was, you know, I think it had to do with understanding and taking responsibility for myself. And so I think I grew up in a, in a, in a household and around people that were predominantly men. So I adapted a lot of men kind of habits and behavior and dialogue. And so for the longest time, I would do things and think that that was actually my true self and my true voice. And it actually wasn't. And so I was allowing, like, you know, people to take advantage of me and not, you know, physically, mentally, but in different ways, right? In, in relationships, not supporting me or telling me that I need to do things when it's like, instead of accepting me for who I am, rather than what you want me to be, because I'm servicing your need when you should be servicing yours. And then I can add to it, right? And so I had friendships like that, you know, I have friendships that I felt I was my true self but yet it still wasn't enough no matter what I did I always did something wrong or there was jealousy within the friendship with other friends and then or relationships and there were relationships that I had with my parents where you know I always felt the need to like overachieve or do something because they didn't so I had to prove that I could because I had the opportunity. So all of these things were giving away my consent, giving away my power, all these different scenarios, right? And relationships. And it took a while because I think it got to the point where I got so exhausted. I was like, who the hell am I? What am I thinking, right? It started happening. I think the, the really big moment was when my brother passed because reality hit. 
right? It was like, oh my gosh, something so unexpected happened. I lost one of my closest friends. And then it happened when I wasn't even here. So that really shifted my perspective of like, slow down. And now what are you like, what are you doing, Amanda? Like, what are you doing with your life? Are you happy? Are you being true to yourself? What do you want? What do you need? Because all those things, I just kind of adapted to other people. I molded myself to what they wanted, what they needed. And then I kind of fit myself in. And yes, I took charge of myself by, you know, getting a career as an actor. And I always felt that was like, I could be creative. And, you know, I would put that first for sure, for sure. But my intimate life was taking a hit. And so I was over consuming like alcohol, going out all the time. And that's great because, you know, when you're 20, that's what you do. You enjoy, right? For sure, for sure. But at a certain point, it got exhausting. It wasn't aligning with my life. It was like actually physically affecting me. <clears throat> and so part of that was figuring out what I needed. And that started very slowly. It was, I don't realize that there was one particular moment. Yes, I think the big moment was my brother to like really freaking slow down. But it was the many different things that I decided. Like physically, I was starting to feel unhealthy. So I started eating differently. That was my choice. I started making choices to change the thing that I needed changing in. That's what it was. And when I started doing that, I started really tapping into my truth and what I actually wanted. And I know it sounds so simple as like changing your eating habits, but are you being honest about what you like, what you don't, right? And so my eating habits became, I became vegan. And I felt so good about it because I love vegetables. If you know me, I just love vegetables. My body physically felt better. My regulation felt better better my energy felt better started doing more things for my skin and my body and so all of that aligned with tapping into my inner voice and asking the questions of like what do I need what do I want what do I like to do what makes me happy right like all these things these questions started becoming to the forefront of my mind versus just skating through life like oh, okay this has just happened all right all oh, this just happened and it's great to go with the ebbs and flows of life for sure but are you consciously doing it? Are you consciously tapping into the ebbs and flows and going, this is where I'm at right now. This is what I need. This is what I want. And this is my inner voice. This is my, my, what my heart's telling me. You know, it's also about aligning too. Was my heart aligning with my mind? So all those things, and it took, again, this has taken years. I think my brother passed in 2016. So it's taken from that 2016 up until now for this phase to be enacted. And it has taken different steps and different stages. And there's a lot of awareness, a lot of admitting, taking responsibility for myself, all of these things. And so, again, by quitting my job, that was reclaiming my inner voice in a different way. That was claiming my inner hero, realizing that I was in a space that was not healthy for me. Also, to responsibility for the fact that my employer needed someone who actually was going to do the job you know and that's again taking responsibility and claiming my inner voice and and understanding that I played a factor in it it's not just everybody oh my gosh why she hate me what, what does she need what does she want that is where I started taking the responsibility of that right so all that inner all that inner work we got to do it it was I can't say it's just one thing it all kind of, and again, it, unless you're aware of it, it just is happening. And then eventually it starts, you start putting the pieces together. Like, oh, that moment served me here. That moment where I just stood up for myself and set boundaries. Like I had to set major boundaries with family and friends of things that I was willing to do and not do. There was things that I decided, I was like, no, my, like taking responsibility for like my money, taking responsibility and Within my family going, yes, they are my family, but I could say no. I think there's a fear around that as well. Like, you can't say no to your family because they're your family. It's like, well, if they're toxic or if, it's, if, you don't, if there's pain there, you can say no and take a step back. You can choose to not be in that dialogue or not. And so a lot of that just kind of led to one to another. And it's just admitting that I needed healing, admitting that I needed change. That was when my inner voice started claiming itself. I started actually hearing it. And then my friend Mel makes fun of me because I'm constantly talking to myself. Like she's like, Amanda, are you talking to someone on the phone? And I'm like, and I don't know it. 
but it's literally how I work through the day is that I constantly talk to myself and it legit like I have conversations with people, but it's literally allowing the flow of thoughts. That's what helps me. And so I've realized like, that's just who I am as far as like what, what works for me, right? I'm choosing this because it helps me heal, helps me be a better person, it helps me be a better artist and actor and claim my life instead of giving it away. The beauty is that we're all still here and change can happen, but it has to be a choice. It has to be your choice. Right? It has to be a choice that you're literally going, I need change. How can I make that happen? Because if you're waiting for someone to save you, you'll be waiting forever, forever, okay? You'll be waiting forever. And this is what I say. You have to be the hero that you need. Out of all of this, um, when I'm talking about inner hero, your inner hero is your highest version, is the self that's standing up for themselves, is setting boundaries, is admitting that they need healing, is that admitting that they've been hurt and like that affected their choices in life is we're taking responsibility for staying in toxic areas and toxic, toxic relationships, is accepting friends and family, you know, belittling them or judging them for their choices, right? That is your inner hero is standing up for yourself in all areas, including your well-being, your mental state, your physical state, and choosing what is going to serve you for the good. All of it is a choice. And no, it sounds hard. Yes, absolutely. Again, my journey did not start until 2016. It did not start. And I didn't even know it started. It just, something happened. And I don't want you to get to the point where something catastrophic happens that you need to go, oh, I'm ready. Oh my gosh, life is terrible. Like, no, I don't want you to get to that. I want you to be able to do that in your current moment and go, okay, take a breath. This is what's happening and take a moment and take a step back and going, this is the reality of everything. This is where I'm at. This is where I want to go. Things, seeing things as a matter of fact. And it's hard to see things as a matter of fact when we're so close to it. I was telling my friend, you know, when you go to a museum, right? And you get close to a painting and you're like this close. What can you see? Only what's right in front of you. You can't, your peripheral can only see like this far. Right, so you end up putting blinders on when you're this close. But when you start taking a step back, you can see the whole painting and the canvas for it's what it is. You see the little bird flying in the, over there, or oh look at that piece over there, or maybe there's a little tear. And that goes with like relationships, that goes with your job and your career, any dissatisfaction. If you take a step back, you'll start seeing the things that need improvement. You'll also start seeing people for who they are and not what you want them to be, and what the shoulda, coulda, would is. That is also a part of claiming your inner hero is going, I'm going to take a step back and see the big picture and where I, where I stand within that. What am I giving my energy to? What am I focusing on? And so I want you to, your inner hero is waiting for you. Everybody has just like I always tell you, everybody is great. Everybody has the ability to be great. We already have it within us. We just have to claim it. Get your ticket. Cash it in. Get that freaking Willy Wonka like golden ticket, baby, and cash it in, right? You've got it. Claim that ticket. Claim that inner voice because it is your right to claim it. It is your right to be the hero that you always needed because you are the hero that you always needed. You can be the adult when you were a child that felt hurt and abandoned. You can choose to be the adult now to go, okay, I'm going to care for the inner child in myself. That is also being a hero for you. And also claiming your inner hero. It's all about how you're choosing to word it, reframe it, and then integrate it into your everyday life, into who you are. Your inner voice, after a while, it just becomes quiet and it becomes integrated into you and it's just you. It just is. It just is. And so I, I hope and thank you for someone saying this is an interesting conversation. I, I, that is my goal. My goal is to start these dialogues and these interesting conversations because Nell and I do it all the time. We have these conversations with our friends and family and our clients, especially our clients, 
who are go going through moments of staleness, going through moments of feeling powerless. We can feel powerless in a world that there are people that claim they have so much power because of money, of their titles, of what they have, right? So they claim that power and we could end up feeling powerless and be let it. But at the end of the day, we have all the power to make a difference in our own lives and the world around us. And so how are you choosing to claim that power, to claim the me, myself, and I, to claim your truth, to claim your happiness, to claim your success? What are you claiming today? Like, I, we talk about setting intentions, but are you claiming your happiness? Are you claiming that and going, I am going to make this a part of who I am every single day? And understanding that there is an ebb, ebb and flow of it, and it changes every single day. It changes every single day because the things that we learned yesterday or the challenges that came up yesterday will affect us today. And so how did it affect you? Is it going to affect you in a negative way and go, oh, my gosh, it, it didn't happen. It didn't work out. Oh, terrible. Guess what? That energy is going into the next day. And if you keep doing that, every day will become just like that, whereas you can go, all right, there was a lesson that I had yesterday. I, I, took, I didn't do as great as I wanted to. How can I do better today? What can I do? Maybe it's time management. Maybe I overbooked myself. Or maybe I didn't take a breath of a moment where I was like, I need to breathe. I need to drink some water. I need to grab some food. I, or meditate in the morning. Or I didn't do it at all. Like I didn't journal. I didn't speak to my mom or any. Like, what was it that was missing that that challenge overwhelmed you? Oh, sorry. I got to jump off here in two oh, minutes. Okay. I forgot yes. I have class. But I wanted to say something real fast. Also, just, um, you know, I also don't want anybody like, it, like, I love everything Amanda's saying about take, you have to take accountability and be your own hero too, because like, I never want to um, hold a grudge against someone because I didn't stand up as my own hero. So just that's the last thought I have is just like, remember, like, however you have to talk to yourself, Amanda's always amazing saying like, let's say it this way, that way, maybe everybody receives it differently, depending on the sentence or the word. But whatever you got to do, you don't want to regret the life that you're living, you don't want to um, be mad at someone or hold a grudge against someone because you weren't your own hero. You know, you didn't do what you wanted to do. So I hope you all really listening to what Amanda was saying. Um, inner dharma to control one's karma. Exactly. It always exactly. comes back to you. What are your thoughts about this episode? Drop it in the comments and let us know what you want to dive into next. Subscribe, like, share, and click the link below to book a free consultation. And we'll, we'll see, see you, you next time. time.